Hi, it's Robin. One more Commodore 128 basic video while I'm getting some more C64 machine language tutorials ready. The Commodore 128 really is a great 8-bit programmer's computer. It has so many improvements over the Commodore 64 for the programmer. One area where they improved a lot was in some debugging tools, some extra utilities built in. So for example, if you're just running a little program here, Okay, and you run that, and you get a syntax error. On the Commodore 64, if you had a very dense basic program, it was sometimes difficult to track down where the error was. But on the C128, you can just type in help, and it will list the line with the error and highlight the section where there's a mistake. You know, if you had some bacon on the mind or whatever here. There we go. Okay, and again with the error, you can print the variable name EL is reserved and it tells the line number of the last error. EL for error line, I assume. And ER is the error number. And there's actually a function called ERR string. And you can just pass ER into that and it will print out the name of the error. And we'll get back to that ER a bit later. We can even use that ERR and here's just a simple loop that prints out the first 20 error messages. This is a lot easier to do. Way back I did a video showing all the C64 error messages that are possible, and it was a fair bit of trouble for me to get all of them to display. Uh, on the C128 I can just print them out as a list, and we can use what we learned the other episode, escape at, to clear the bottom of the screen, but leave the top line free, and just to list the rest of the errors from 21 through 41. There they are. So these strings may be handy when you're writing a program and you want to communicate to the user what the error message is, but the actual error numbers will come in handy and I'll show that in a bit. Okay, so say we have a short little program like this. We're just going to ask the user for the color that they want and input that into variable C. And then we'll poke that into the border color. Loop around with that. So if we put in color zero, border turns black, color one, border turns white. But what if we put in an invalid number like negative one? Well, our program crashes with an illegal quantity error in line 20. And on the C64, you had to do quite a bit of bounds checking and so on, as we call it nowadays, to sanitize the input. But the Commodore 128 Basic has a neat feature, so we'll just add a few lines here. We'll add the trap command, and line 100. Trap is essentially like a go-to, but it only fires when there is an error. It's very similar to what we have in modern languages, such as a try and catch. And then we'll write our little trap routine, our error trapping routine. So that's just going to print out the error number and the associated string. And then the resume command continues execution of the program. You can put a line number here, essentially just like a go-to, but it leaves the trap routine and continues regular program execution. You can also do a resume on its own that tries to execute the line over again, or resume next continues the line after the error occurred. So let's try resume 10. We'll list that program now and try running it. So again, color zero works. Let's try negative one. And instead of the program crashing, it tells us the error number and the error message, illegal quantity. We could also try putting in a huge number. Did you know that you can type an E when a program is expecting a number value? You can put an E for exponent. So we can do a huge number like 2 to the 10. That's also an illegal quantity. 
it's too large for a poke but you can even put an enormous number like to the power of 100 and instead you get error number 15 overflow that number is so large it won't even fit in a float variable at my day job one of the uh, qa people was complaining that you could type an e into a numeric field in a web form an online form and i had to explain well it's a valid number they didn't like that there was a letter e was allowed no other letters were allowed just numbers and e so we can prove this trap routine to check for these different conditions if the error is 14 then we can print enter a number from 0 to 255 which is the range of a poke and then we can resume and if error is 15 number is way too big in case some other error happens that we haven't trapped yet color 2 is red color negative 1 triggers the enter a number from 0 to 255 a huge number causes the number is way too big error so this trap feature is quite powerful you could have multiple trap routines depending on the part of your program that you're executing you can point the trap routine to a different section of your program so it can really add a lot of robustness to your c128 basic programs and just to use this example a little bit more there's another command called Tron. Now, of course, Tron is awesome, but <laughs> this isn't the movie, unfortunately, or the video game. Tron stands for trace on, and what it does is just prints out the current line number that your program, just before it executes a line, it prints the line number. So I'll run this program with trace on, and you see it's printed out line number five and 10, and then it's asking for the input. And we'll give it color number three. And you see it execute line 20, 30, and then back to 10. And it prompts for the color again. Now, if we give it a negative one, it executes line 20 when it tries to poke that negative one into 53280 into the border color. And that causes it to jump to line 100, which prints out line number 100 twice and it's interesting that it does that i believe the comparison causes the line number to be printed out once and then the then statement with the print that's another statement another clause causes the line number to be printed again and then the resume 10 is yet another statement all packed into line 100 so that's why line 100 is printed three times in the trace and then it goes back to line 10 again okay and to go along with tron is trough <laughs> trace off okay so those are some of the built-in debugging features in the commodore 128 okay and one other thing we can do is from disk access we do a catalog that shows the current directory this is coming off my micro iec this is all the leftover files from the last episode about the sample playing after you do a disk access you can print ds string and it tells you if everything's okay but if i try to send a command like change directory to stuff it says ready but actually there's an error i can print ds string and it tells me what the problem is that there is no file found with that name and after I successfully close the file, everything's okay. So if I go back up here and I try to change directory instead to SID, which I believe does exist. Yes, it tells me everything is okay. Close 15. So that DS string, which I believe is disk status, that can be a handy debugging tool as well when you're issuing disk commands. Okay, thanks for watching. Like I was saying, uh, I've got an assembly language tutorial coming up shortly. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you next time.